taking photographs of food that they prepared. And actually what they weren't doing is showing you the kind of like six Mars bars, you know, the, the three cream cakes, et cetera, that they binged on and then vomited up. Right. And so it was a complete fiction. In my experience working in, in fitness media for so long, I've got to know quite a lot of, of influencers, specifically in the training and in, in, in the eating or the nutrition space. And everything you said completely resonates with me, you know, people looking up to these influencers. But having had the conversations with them, I think what, what never fails to, to surprise me is the number of these influencers who are portraying this fantastic, amazing life are struggling probably more severely with some of the things we've talked about than, than the average person watching them. There's a couple of things specifically, uh, Dr. Pemberton, I'd like to talk to you about. The first is influencers giving out nutrition advice who have eating disorders or disordered eating patterns, again, however want to phrase it. And also um, specifically male fitness models with body dysmorphia and maybe gone down the performance enhancing drugs route claiming to be natural. Focusing first on the nutrition advice influencers and eating disorders, in your experience, is my experience of speaking to these people a rarity or is it something you're seeing more and more? I would say, I mean, a hundred percent, I would say it's actually, probably, it certainly feels like it's actually the majority. Wow. Um, it's certainly not a minority. I mean, I, so I, I, for 10 years, just before the pandemic, I, I left, but for 10 years, I worked in an eating disorder service, a very specialist eating disorder service for um, very people with very severe eating disorders. And at one point we had three people who were very, very well-known, influential kind of bloggers, Instagrammy type people, um, in treatment in the eating disorder service that I was working at, and actually as professionals, as the doctors and the diet and, and, and the dietitians, we actually had to have a meeting to go. What I mean, we're not actually sure what to do about this, because actually when you looked at their profiles and what they were putting out, it was very, very, very different to the reality of what we knew was actually happening. And so they were kind of saying, you know, to, to eat this, 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 and so on and so on. And they were kind of uh, taking photographs of food that they prepared. And actually what they weren't doing is showing you the kind of like six Mars bars, you know, the, the three cream cakes, et cetera, that they binged on and then vomited up. Right. And so it was a complete fiction, the social media um, uh, kind of posting that they put on. And actually some of the, it, was, it wasn't just the fact that some of what they were saying was in, factually incorrect. Uh, you know from the scientific point of view but actually it felt incredibly inauthentic you had lots of lots of particularly younger people hanging on their every word and actually it was the, the I was thinking well like, you know you wouldn't you wouldn't normally take advice from this person if, if they knew the history and knew what was going on nobody would give them a platform at all and in fact actually they would tell them that they shouldn't be speaking about these kind of topics because they were so unwell and actually, we were, we, our hands were tied because of patient confidentiality and there's nothing we could do. Um, and again and again, we would try to sort of broach these subjects with these people and say, actually, you know, is this a good idea? And unfortunately, part of, part of their illness was this being relatively insightless. Um, and so we really sort of struggled to explain to them, well, actually, some of this advice isn't helpful. You know, some of it is, it, it's also portraying a very unrealistic uh but it's giving a very real, unrealistic portrayal of what it is possible for people to eat and you also don't even stick to it yourself i mean it, it's so unrealistic even you don't stick to it because i guess there's, um, a, there's a couple of things there you could if you're being very very sympathetic you could argue that these people actually if they are given good advice uh, and they're trying to help people then and that, that maybe going through some of these these troubles themselves maybe it's coming from a good place but then as you've just said if you flip it around saying they don't really know what they're talking about they're actually giving advice that could be damaging to people who who know less about nutrition I mean I guess the concern obviously it's great you manage to treat some people but there must be an awful lot of people out there still struggling with their own eating but telling people how to eat without any education yeah absolutely uh, and I suppose there's one thing, there's one thing, somebody who is in recovery from an eating disorder, who is giving advice about their experience of that, that I would wholly recommend and, and commend. And I think that's fantastic. And it's incredibly helpful often for people. It's very different before you come into treatment, having a very established platform, which is actually based on a fantasy. Um, and, and which actually, when you look through it in a more critical way, knowing the person, you can actually see elements of kind of the body dysmorphia coming through, um, the kind of unhelpful, unhealthy understandings of food groups and so on. Um, 
and so I mean, and that's a very extreme example. But actually, what I frequently come across things, you know, for example, clean eating and the clean eating kind of craze, which I I would I would reframe that as an eating disorder. And actually, the whole clean eating, I think, movement from an eating disorder as an eating disorder specialist, the, it's very hard actually to distinguish some of the messaging from clean eating is it's from uh, people with a severe eating disorder. <laughs> it's very very similar. Um, and I and I you know I've spent a long time and ten years of my career fighting against this idea of grouping foods into good and bad and actually food is 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 is, is amoral it isn't good or bad it's everything in 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 balance and actually that goes completely you know it's what dietitians spend a life trying to argue and yet then you have this movement ostensibly under a healthy movement that is actually propagating an incredibly unhelpful message in general but particularly damaging if you have an underlying eating disorder or the propensity for one 